it is now time to get started on our reports. And the first thing we need to do is get some data. And in this first example, I'm going to import multiple CSV files from a folder. And these CSV files contain sales data. So the scenario here is that we have a coffee shop and we have multiple shops around the world in different locations. And the transactional data is in these files. So this is the folder called sales and it's in my documents folder. But for you, it will be wherever you have downloaded and saved this material. You can see in here that we have four files, all of them are CSVs, and they have a consistent naming of sales and the year. So we have four years worth of random and fictional data. Back into Power BI, on the Home tab, if we click on Get Data, this will drop down a list of common data sources, and Folder is not on that list. So if I click on More, this would expand into a window with the complete list of data sources. Now we have different categories down the left hand side, but if I just scroll down this all list for a moment, you can see the volume of data sources that you can use in Power BI, and this is constantly growing. We can see PDF in here, and as I move down, some very common data sources that you may use or at least be aware of. So we have Google Analytics, a LinkedIn sales navigator, GitHub, and the list goes on and on. So this is really cool and you might find the software that you use in here ready to rock. If I scroll back up, because folder was near the top of the list, I'll select that and click connect. First of all, it will ask us to browse or provide the path for that folder. Now mine is on the documents folder. So if I click on browse and expand libraries, I can choose documents, scroll down a little bit, and there is my sales folder. If I click okay, the path is put into that folder path field and click on OK, we'll now connect to that. And we see a window listing all of the files that it can find in that folder. Now in this example, it is only the CSVs. At the bottom, there are a few buttons for some actions. It is always encouraged to go straight for transform data. We will be combining it very soon, but it's always a good habit to click on transform data so you get the opportunity to look at it before you start taking any major steps. We now see the list of files in the Power Query Editor. Now we are not going to spend a huge amount of time on Power Query in this course. For that, if you're new to this tool, you will need to find yourself a Power Query course for some more in-depth information. We will be covering a variety of transformations and Power Query features over the next few lessons, but it's a much larger tool than what we can go into any serious detail in this course. But at this point, if there were files in that folder that we did not want to use, we could filter them out, maybe using the extension column to avoid any PDFs or Excel workbooks that might be in here. For us, we are going to combine it. This is exactly what we want. And there's a button, a double arrow button in the header of the content column. And if I click on that, it's going to open up all four of those files and stack them into one big list. We get this window first, giving us an insight to those files. We are happy with this. If I click OK, it's going to take a little while to combine those and we get that complete list. We have the name of the file in the first column and then we have the order ID, the date of the transaction, the sale. 
we have the product and also in the same column the name of the shop's location and then the country code for the country that that shop resides in or that location is found in. We then have the all important amount. Now the file name in the first column can be very useful in analysis sometimes but for us right now it's not needed. I don't need the year in its name because I have the year in the date field. So I'm simply going to right mouse click on that column and remove it. Now in Power Query, on the right hand side, as we go through these transformations, we have an applied steps pane listing every step that we take. So in the future, when we have our report going, we can just refresh this and every step is updated. Power Query is absolutely amazing. Now there's a lot of steps in there at the moment. We don't need to worry about any of them really, apart from the source and then the remove columns which we just performed ourselves, Because those steps were done by the importing from a folder and then the combining into one list. And Power Query did it so that we don't have to worry about it. If I was to make a mistake and I realized that I don't want to remove that column really, I could just click on that small black X next to that step and it is removed. And that is your undo button of Power Query. On the far left, we have a queries pane. And once again, there's a lot of queries because Power Query generated those when it combined the files. The only one that we're interested in as part of this course, because we can't go into that detail, is the sales query. Now to carry on through some transformations, we can see we have a product column and we need to separate the product name and the location of the shop. So I'm going to select the product column and from the home tab, click on split column. There's some really cool options in here but we want by delimiter. It automatically assesses the column and assumes we want that open bracket, which we do, but I'm going to put a space before it as well. So it removes that space between the product name and the bracket. We then get the option to where to split it at. Will it be each occurrence? I'm going to change that to rightmost delimiter. In this example, it shouldn't make any difference. In fact, I know it makes no difference because there are no other brackets in that column. But I'm choosing rightmost delimiter because if it was to suddenly become an issue, I know the locations on the end of the column, therefore it will be the rightmost. Click OK, we'll perform that split and produce a new column as a result. We now have a product column and this location column. Now I want to remove that closed bracket from the location. So if I select that column and there's a button called replace values nearby that split column button. In here, I will ask it to replace the closed bracket with nothing and click OK and that bracket is removed. As we go through these steps on the right hand side, you can see all the applied steps taking place. And you may remember from the previous video on Power BI options, where there was an option to auto detect the data type. And you can see in applied steps, I have two change type steps. Nothing that serious, but that was that setting, automatically generating these data type changes. And that's why some people like to disable that. So you don't get too many of those. But I've left them there, they're not doing any harm, and I wanted us to see that. I'm now going to rename those columns. If I double click on the first one and call it product, and then double click on the second one and call it location. Now I'm going to double check the data types myself. So although they auto detected it, they may not have it correct. Now the first column, you can see a small icon indicating one, two, three, that that is storing whole numbers, and that's great. The second column has a date icon, so that's a date. In product, we have text, 
and location is also text, as is the country code. All of them perfect. Now the final one for amount, that 1.2 indicates a decimal value, which the amount is. But I'm going to click on that little icon, because it's actually a button, and that allows us to change that data type. And I'm changing it to a fixed decimal, so that when I click on that, all of the results have two decimal places, it's fixed. That now means we have three change type steps on the right hand side. The final step in here for the moment is going to be to rename this query. In the properties pane on the right, it's named sales. I'm going to rename that as sales prep because this is not actually the finished result yet. In a couple of lessons time, we're going to work off this query. This is just the initial preparation. It's not perfect for us yet. So I've named it sales prep, and now I'm going to close and apply to load this into our Power BI model. Close and apply is on the home tab on the very far left. If I click on that, it will take a little while here just to load this into our model because it's quite a large set of data. And here we have it on the fields list on the right, we can see all the data is loaded. We have our sales prep table, and then it's fields. We have a calendar icon next to the date field, and we have this sum icon, this sigma, indicating the numeric fields from that query. Now that is a little over a million rows of data. Just to quickly show that off with the first visual of this course, in this visualizations area, if I click on a card icon, that will dump this card tile into our report. And I'm going to drag the order ID field into this fields area to its left. That will count the order IDs by default, just to show that we have loaded 1.2 million rows of data from those four CSV files. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get four free courses in Excel, QuickBooks, Microsoft Project, and Photoshop, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.